What is up guys, Stu here. Sorry there's a minor breakdown getting videos out for you guys. My Final Cut Pro and laptop both at the same time decided, nope, not gonna work. And then suddenly they started working again. So I couldn't really do anything on that side of things for about a week, which has really pushed my schedule back. And today's review is for a film which I wanted to get out a lot earlier than this, because it actually comes out tomorrow here in the UK. So I'm really cutting this one fine, but I went out and saw film stars don't die in Liverpool at the London Film Festival. So let's talk about that shit. So Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool is the latest film from Paul McGuigan. I, I think I'm saying it right, gonna flow with it anyway. Who is the director behind films like Lucky Number 7, a film I really enjoy, and more recently films like Victor Frankenstein, a film which I didn't really <laughs> enjoy. And it's basically the story of a romance that blossoms between a young aspiring actor and a somewhat older Hollywood leading lady. The two of them meet, they kind of fall in love and whatnot, and that's our film. We're exploring what happens there when they meet and later on in life. To be honest, I really didn't have any idea this film was a thing until before the festival, I saw it pop up on one of those go check this out, the festival things. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna go check it out. Went and checked it out and it was all right. It, it wasn't bad, it wasn't anything amazing. It was just one of those, yeah, nice. It's a nice little film. It stars Jamie Bell and Annette Benning as the lead romantic duo in the film and they both do really great jobs i mean jamie bell is doing some of his best work for years here he's absolutely fantastic to watch probably the stand-up performance for me in this one he just brings this genuine kind of authentic emotion to the role which really just adds a little bit of heart to it it makes it feel a little bit more human and helps elevate some of the elements which i don't think some other things in the film do a particularly great job at heightening there. Uh, yeah, I thought he was a fantastic part of this film. Really great seeing him here. But also alongside him, Annette Benning is great as well. I didn't really need to say that because it's Annette Benning, But no, she does do a fantastic job here. She's got this really great, charming, likeable quality to her right from the get-go as soon as we meet her. And most importantly, I do think the two of them work really well together on the whole. But the direction from Paul McGuigan here does do its job in elevating it somewhat above what would have just been a very typical run-of-the-mill romantic drama here. He imbues the whole film with this style which doesn't always work but on the whole does do a good job of keeping it feeling fresh. It is however one of those films that also it, when it goes style just means cool transitions which are cool to watch like Jamie Bell will open a door and it won't be the room he was going into it'll be like the beach. I'll be like whoa for a second there this is this is some trippy shit but I see what you've done there Paul. Cheeky little frisbee. Good transition. But that is a style in a lot of directors which does tend to come off as slightly obnoxious at a certain point when it happens so many times you're like, okay, we get it. Transitions can be cool. You've done a good job. And another kind of side aspect of that is that I'm never really sure what's behind any of the doors in this film. That's a positive or negative. It's up to you. If, if you're a doorman and, and you like not knowing what's behind doors, it could be a beach. Jamie Bell can open a door to anywhere in this film. So it's got that surprise going for it. But behind the obvious style that Paul McGuigan... Uh, brings to this film in the direction side of things. It is quite a run-of-the-mill romantic drama. It hits all of the beats I was expecting it to hit. As soon as it started, I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure this is going to go this way. And then it did. And I don't necessarily think that's a huge negative in the film because it isn't the sort of film that's going for big, wild, outrageous plot twists and it's very comfortable just going through the story that you'd expect to see. But it does mean that once you can see the arguments and dialogue and drama between characters happening before it happens in the film, it kind of loses the payoff a little bit there. It doesn't really nail the landing. But then on the other side of that, it is still pretty effective overall in doing what it's trying to do here. I was moved and I did feel for these characters, so it was quite heartwarming in that sense. And particularly towards the end of the film, I did find myself won over a little bit by the warmth of the film. It's a nice, lovely little film at the end of the day. And that's something that's carried through in the screenplay as well. It's filled with some really charming moments of comedy in there. Just some of the lines that Jamie Bell says to Annette Benning throughout. It, they're just nice. You know, when you're watching a couple on screen just being nice to each other and you're like, ah, oh, I want to be, I want to be snuggled up in bed just watching you two. Not doing that. Oh, Jesus. No, stop it. But the main annoyance for me in terms of the screenplay here is that it's one of those films where the dramatic moments and the conflict that arises between characters seems to evolve at the beginning of a scene get wrapped up by the end of that scene and then it just sort of moves on to the next dramatic conflict and after a while it just kind of becomes all right can we just have a bit of time to breathe on these things like there is an actual scene in this film where an argument starts and i'm like oh that's going to be the the main dramatic through line of the rest of this film we're going to see how the characters are dealing with oh no it's solved Okay, let's just walk through another door, Jamie. Go to the next scene. But I also feel like there are points where characters seem to be doing things 
just purely because the story's asking him to do that. I don't feel like that's what these characters might have done. But then actually that is also something that was saved within the film by the stylistic directing from Paul McGuigan. There's a sequence, for example, where they get in an argument um, for whatever reason and it kind of does that thing where it'll go back later and show you another side of that and you can start to see why certain people were acting that way, which saved that moment because the first time that scene happened, I was like, hey, what the fuck? Why is why are you acting like that? And for like a good 20 minutes, it was it was jarring enough to take me out of the film and really sort of sap my enjoyment out of it at that point. But then it did that thing where it's like, wait, this is also this is also how that scene happened from someone else's perspective. And I was like, oh shit. Now it makes sense. I feel like an idiot. So yeah, it kind of saves itself within the film, but at the same time, I still had those feelings when I was watching it originally. Weird point to make, I <laughs> I admit. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's a nice film driven by some really solid central performances from Jamie Bell and Annette Benning. It's not that memorable. I've certainly started to forget a lot of things about it at this point. I've left it quite late to do this review, so I'm sorry about that. But I had a good time. I enjoyed it. As I said, there are flaws throughout that were jumping out at me, and I was like, oh shit, I shouldn't be enjoying this as much as I am. But by the end, it was kind of impossible not to get one over by it. I'm going to go ahead and give Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool a very high three stars. On a second watch, I wouldn't be surprised if that went up to four stars. But yeah, sort of teetering on the edge there between three and four. But what about you guys? Have you seen Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool yet? It comes out in the UK tomorrow. Or, if my internet's being particularly fun, today. I, it, it, or, or it came out yesterday. I don't know. My internet's terrible. <laughs> Let me know what you thought about in the comments below. I'd love to know. And as usual, if you like this review and want to see me talk about more shit, please consider clicking subscribe. It really helped me out. But until next time, stay beautiful, mother truckers. I'm truly, truly big. Shit, where to edge you for? Back at the end of the video, moving to the side to show you that sweet old London Film Festival 2077. Stop it, Stu. Why are you carrying on? 2017 playlist. Just here, click it. The reviews from the festival this year. It's filling up. Find what you want. Watch me talk about it. And then write a comment like, you're a poop mouth. Shit, you head. I'm out of here.